Good morning. If I were to ask you to write or say a prayer for our church, I wonder what you would say or where you would begin. There's probably a lot of things we'd want to pray, isn't there? But do you know what? I think the reading that we have from today, uh, these verses from Ephesians chapter three, which is part of the second prayer that Paul writes for the church in Ephesus, is probably a good place to start. Now, I can't expound these words in lots of depth because we've literally got a couple of minutes. But I just want to bring a couple of things out for us today. <clears throat> There's a lot about depth in these verses. Paul prays about um, the Ephesus church and their inner beings and their hearts and their rootedness in Christ. There's something about depth there, isn't it? The depth of together, not just individually, together seeing how uh, encompassing, how all encompassing Jesus' love is for his church. Just a couple of days ago, uh, we thought about the cross. And I love the image of the way that Jesus' arms, you can't see my arms because of where the camera is, of Jesus' arms spread out, open wide, all encompassing on the cross for all who come to him. Wouldn't that be a good prayer for us to pray for our church? That we would all together grow in depth of understanding and experience of God's love for us. And sometimes we find that hard on our own, but these verses also remind us that we're not on our own. Not only do we have one another, but we have the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we will celebrate that in a few weeks' time at Pentecost. The Spirit who gives us power, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, in order to help us to grasp the love that Jesus has shown for us and has for us today. Maybe that gives you a starting point for praying a prayer for our church, for God's church today. Bless you. See you soon.